Welcome to On the Hill, a quarterly series dedicated to informing hoteliers of the latest legislative updates in the hospitality industry. I'm Alan Roleri, publisher of Hotel Business, and I'm here with Chip Rogers, President and CEO of the HLA. Chip, thanks for joining us today. Great to be with you, thank you. So, the HLA recently released a study about the economic impact of hotels, and some of these findings are, are really remarkable. Um, one of them that I read was that hotels support more than one in 25 American jobs, bringing that to like 8.3 million in total. Right. So what other key factors did you find that you could share with us? Well, so you, you talked about the really good news, and that is is that the industry is growing. Um, our impact on the job market is probably greater than just about anyone realized. I mean, these numbers came back even stronger than I thought they would. Um, and it helps us when we're telling our story to lawmakers because sometimes they forget just what an important role a hotel plays in a local community. It's not just the gathering place where so many events take place. It's not just the home away from home for people that are traveling into, into their districts, but it's also the source of so many jobs, helping people realize the American dream right there in their own district. So it's a great story that we can tell and it's showing what our industry means, not just globally, not just here specifically in the U.S., but in local communities. So um, we're very happy with it. The challenge is, is that um, while there are 8.3 million people who are employed, um, there could be about 9.3 million people because we have almost a million openings right now. Um, that's a, a good problem to have. It's better than having to lay off people. Um, so the economy has done exceptionally well. Uh, but this report just highlights how important our industry is to the U.S. economy. So with, with that level of growth, uh, does that pose any challenges? Well, labor is undoubtedly the biggest challenge that we face um, because you're having a very difficult time finding people. So it's not necessarily even a wage issue. We've seen wages naturally go up uh, when there's a scarcity of anything. The price goes up. There's a scarcity of labor right now, so therefore the price has gone up. We can accept that. That's part of, of how the, the process works. Um, but there's been a big challenge of actually finding people. And then when you get into some of the resort places uh, where H-2B visas, that whole program is just an absolute mess. Uh, the federal government has got to fix that. I was recently in, in Mackinac Island, uh, absolutely lovely place. There's no way they will ever get a workforce in, in an island in northern Michigan unless they can bring in seasonal workers. It's just not going to work. Um, and so they face the challenge, but you have hundreds of other resorts that face that same challenge. So um, the system where the government is involved, involved has got to be better, uh, but the demand is there, the economy is good, and the industry continues to grow. Excellent. I recently read uh, a stat claiming that, that one in four consumers are misled by online travel agencies. So talk a little bit about why it's so important for consumers to, to book direct or, or with a trusted travel agent. Well, to begin with, it's a better deal. Right. If you book direct, not only are you going to get that guaranteed pricing, but you're also going to get the benefits, particularly if you're a rewards member or a points member with a specific hotel, you're going to get those benefits that come along with booking direct that you're not going to get elsewhere. If there is a problem when you show up at the front desk and you book direct, guess what? They're going to be able to handle your problem. If you've gone through a third party, they may not be able to handle your problem. Um, when you're looking online, you might see these fantastic photos of, of a property, and if it's through a third party, it can be completely different. It can be wrong. I mean, there's, there's no oversight to make sure that that is accurate information, whereas if you're going direct and you see a Hilton or a Marriott or an IHG or, or any of the brands and you see that specific hotel you, and you see those photos, that's what you're going to get. So um, it's just, as the name indicates, searchsmarter.org, it's just a better way to do it better pricing, or at least guaranteed pricing, uh, better amenities, uh, no confusion, and no problem when you get to the hotel that you're going to have to try to sort out. Right. So, so what, did, in addition to uh, the, the Search Smarter campaign, uh, are you doing to help protect consumers? Well, look, we, we've worked with lawmakers to make sure that the idea that when someone books a hotel, that they're booking directly with the person that is selling them a hotel room um, is the best way to go. And that if there's a third party doing it and they're not the actual hotel or they're not the brand and they're representing themselves that way, then the consumer ought to know about that. Uh, consumers, I think the same study from Morning Consult that you referenced, 94% of the folks who responded said 
they believe they ought to know whether the person they're doing business with is actually the hotel. So that's, you know, in, in, in America today, uh, so many issues are divisive. This one's not, 94% to 6%. I don't know what the 6% we're thinking, but um, yeah, this one's pretty common sense. Right. So switching gears uh, to international travelers, which are uh, really a, a really important part of a healthy uh, tourism economy. Uh, what is the state of international travel to the United States today? So the good news is globally more people are traveling. We think that is important for a number of reasons. When you look at geopolitical tensions and you recognize that oftentimes we have political leaders throughout the world that can pit one group of people against another, when those people travel and they get to experience other cultures, other countries, other peoples, they're like, you know, those people are pretty nice. We've seen that actually happen here in the U.S. I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. But what the problem is for the U.S. is that as that market share has grown recently, our global market share has shrunk. So while there's still a lot of visitors coming to the U.S., and that's a wonderful thing, if we had just kept up with our market share, you know, it would have been billions and billions of more dollars in activity, which would have translated into hundreds of thousands of more jobs. So we actually saw this trend begin uh, back in 2015. That was kind of the high water mark. And since that time, we've seen an erosion in the U.S. market share of global travel. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Primarily, one of them is, is, is the strength of the U.S. dollar. It's more expensive to come to the U.S. Um, but we have such a great story to tell, and we can overcome that hurdle with Brand USA and what we're doing marketing the U.S. to the rest of the world if it gets reauthorized. And, and that's what we've been facing with Congress is that for some reason they haven't yet reauthorized something that is truly a win-win-win. There are no taxpayer dollars being used here. The visitors actually pay a small fee that has been matched by private sector companies. That money, that pool of money, not taxpayer money, is then used to market the U.S. So you're bringing more visitors in who, by the way, spend on average $4,000 when they come here. That's adding to local economies. That's helping grow businesses. So as I said, it's a win-win-win. People get to experience the U.S. No taxpayers' dollars are being used. Businesses are being built. And the final thing I'll, I'll say on that is that the studies have shown that when someone has never traveled to the U.S., their perception of America is only about 20-something percent positive, 24 percent positive. If they come to the U.S., that changes to 70 percent positive. So when we think about the message of working around the world globally, there's nothing better than to get people to come to our country and experience what we have to offer. Absolutely. Chip, thanks for all the great information and for joining us. And on behalf of Hotel Business, thanks for being with us.